it is so rare to have someone, particularly a man, pull the body of work and contributions of black women to the fore in such a systematic way. And I mean, I'm very moved by that because this wasn't just feminists, black feminists that you're talking about, which is one strand of black women's commitment to racial and gender justice in the world. But you're talking about black women across all kinds of industries and all kinds of modes of activism and all kinds of, of creativity and to see them as a, a group, N not that you got to everybody in our conversation here, you're right. just getting warmed up in terms of how many sisters you were gonna <laughs> deal with. But I think it's so important for people to understand just how pivotal women are in the black community in every way, right? Not in one place or another, not just as feminists, not just demanding women's rights, which is critical, but building institutions. And so I just wanna really, I just want to tell you how much I, I respect and appreciate that and how much it's not about theorizing, it's about building. And, and that's just so, True. so important. The, the, the sac why don't we don't say sacrifice, the commitment to that building is, is so important. And, and again, we, we often speak about men and the things they build. But for you to say, hey, look, for me to do what I had to do, this is who made me possible in this regard. I mean, I'm just, I just want to thank you for that very, very sincerely. Some of the greatest revolutionaries in our culture are brothers and sisters that build businesses. Why? Because every two weeks they got to make a payroll. I can't pay you with a check, with a, with a poem. You need money to take care of your family. Right? <laughs> and I wrote about that in some depth in one of my books, Black Men, Obsolete Single Dangers, yep. which is over a million copies in print, mainly read in prisons. All right. Mm -hmm. And so, yes. What I learned early is that when you begin to ask people outside of your culture for anything, they think they own you, okay? And so this is why I'm saying that, that, that one gains respect dependent upon what you produce. And so my production is not only as a poet or an educator, but also as an institution builder along with other brothers and sisters. And so for me, where black men took 12 years to write, taught by women, took a lifetime. Mm -hmm. It took a lifetime. It started with my mother, all the way up through Gwendolyn Brooks. But more importantly, it started with my study of women, mm -hmm. my study of the work of Fannie Lou Hamer, mm -hmm. my study of the work of Margaret Burroughs, but also my study of work of Lucille Clifton, Alice Walker, Toni Morrison, Elizabeth Catlett, Anita Hill, Betty Carter, Gail Jones, Aretha Franklin, Betty Shabazz, Sonia Sanchez, Betty, Beverly Guy Sheftel, Bell Hooks, Paula Geddes, Janetta B. Cole, Diane Nash, Coretta Kaskai King, Nina, Nina Simone. I met Nina Simone in 1969 in Algiers. Okay. Mm. I went to this festival in Algiers when Nina Simone and the Black Panthers were in Algiers at that time. This was the first Pan African festival in Algiers. And Nina Simone was there singing. I'll never forget it, okay? And that's when I first met her. That's what I've, you know, I'm saying that, that, that essentially our culture is so rich. And once you begin to get a part of the culture, you don't want to go back to anything else. Mm. And these women are central. Janetta B. Cole and, Be and Beverly Gosheftel. Very few people. My daughters went to Spelman. And uh, Janetta Cole was the president of Spelman. And she took Spelman to another whole level in terms of her dedication and commitment to our people. And I will never forget, we we're doing a fundraiser here in Chicago and I called Dr. Cole and said, could you please come in and help us, you know, you know, with, with building these schools and we want you to keynote. And she said, uh, Haki, I'm coming. I'm taking care of everything. You have to pay me, I'm taking care of everything. Just get me a car, a car to pick me up at the airport and get me back, okay? She's a lot like Cornell West, mm -hmm. who did the same thing in many cases for us. And so, Trisha, what you are doing, see, building institutions is not easy. What you all, what you all are doing here with this podcast, this is an institution. You see, you got to come from your regular job and do this on your own time. You see, and so. We thank you, both of you, 
for doing this critical work. And for me, these women have always been profound. I got a story about almost every woman in here that I met personally. And so, but let me not, ask you, Haki, Haki, how did you get to such an appreciation? I mean, truth be told, a lot of brothers been raised up by brilliant women. Don't mean they appreciate it. Hmm. I mean, that's the truth, right? Some that's many true. do. Cornell does. I mean, there's a lot of my husband does. He's got he's he's wise. Um, but <laughs> you know, how did you come to such a genuine appreciation? You're not just giving lip service to sort of, oh, I celebrate my black queens and all this, that, and other. You talking about look, this is what women have contributed, along with brothers. It's not one or the other, right? But how did you come to that that consciousness and you know, and, 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 and do you find that other men appreciate it? I mean, how do you talk men into this? <laughs> like, I want to know how you were able to basically school people into this appreciation because, you know, sexism in the community is a very destructive force right. for, our, for our survival and our, 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 our wholeness and our, and our fullness. So I, I'm really genuinely impressed, but also I would love to know the secret sauce. How did you come to this? I saw how my mother who was one of the most beautiful women in the world, was mistreated, maltreated. And when you look at the um, beginning of Taught by Women, the first piece in the book is Why Women? Mm -hmm. And I write, Taught by Women is my acknowledgement and thank you to over half of the world's population who remain too often property, raped, honor killed, diminished, enslaved, lynched, dismissed, excluded, lied to, abused, sexualized, sex trafficked, devalued, demeaned, executed, in prison, forgotten, forced into unwanted marriages, miseducated, undereducated, beheaded, and bodily disfigured, all motivating me to be pro-girl and woman which requires serious listening and specialized learning, advanced thought, care, action, and language that highlights black music, poetry, and visual art, which I received from my mother, a woman who worked and died in the sex trade of the 1950s, just as capitalism, white supremacy, black ignorance, enslavement, and anti-religious thought killed her. I, her only son, am able today and tomorrow to act and state with finality, stop. And again, thank you to black women and the world of women for saving my life. So Trisha, what I'm saying essentially, I saw my mother as beautiful as she was internally and externally mistreated. One of my earlier fights was with a stepfather who wasn't really my stepfather, but he lived with us, beating my mother. And I came out of the kitchen with a, with a, with a butcher knife. I was 12 years old. Mm. But <laughs> mm. yeah. I was all ready right. to go to war. Go to war. Okay. All right. It's, it's all right, my brother. That's all right. I it's saw all right. essentially how women were mistreated. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, that has been always in the back of my mind, on my mind. How can I, what can I do? And so this has never been. And so when you look at my mentors, you talk about Gwilin and Books, you're talking about Margaret Burroughs, you're talking about Barbara Ann Sizemore in terms of the women, early women in my life. And then you're talking about El Hajj Malik El Shabazz. You're talking about Dudley Randall, who founded Broadside Press and one of the finest poems we have produced, which I modeled Third World Press after. And you're talking about Hort W. Fuller, who was a managing editor of Negro Digest, Black World Magazine, one of the major vehicles to come out of the Black arts movement that chronicled our movement, you see. Mm -hmm. And all of these people were pro-women, including the women. See, you found you know, a lot of women who are anti-women, okay? Yeah, well, we only do what we've been taught to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We only do what we've been taught to do. But, but I so think therefore but we have to create. But I think we have to say quite explicitly that this text is unprecedented in the history of Black people. Right. Because when you reach the level that you have, Du Bois' essay, The Damnation of Women, mm. good effort falls far short. Martin Luther King Jr., no such exaltation and salute. We love our brother forever. Malcolm X, no such exaltation and elevation. We love our brother forever. Mary Baraka, 
no such elevation with content and substance. We shall love our brother forever. We can go on and on. Malana Karanga, uh, uh, A. Philip Randolph. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no other black man at the level that you have reached to be able to go back to the genuine existential affirmation and, 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 and affiliation of women coming to, to be the sources of your liberatory self, your liberatory spirit, that your mm -hmm. genius is inseparable from the genius of Gwendolyn Brooks at that level. Right. You know what I mean? I, do you know of any other text in the history of Black folk like that? There's no such thing. Mm -hmm.